Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I decided to film another video. It's another sit down type of video where I'll be pretty much oversharing about my life with you. For this one, I need a glass of wine. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jackie and I'm a self-taught software engineer based in London and I currently work at Prime Video. So something happened recently that kind of made me reflect a lot about where I am in life right now and where I would like to be. And for a few days, this kind of drove me into a bit of a toxic thought pattern that ended up affecting my self-esteem. And what triggered this small quarter-life crisis was the collapse of FTX. If you don't know, FTX was one of the biggest and supposedly safest cryptocurrency exchanges out there. Recently, in a matter of days, it completely collapsed and it went bankrupt. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on what happened, that's kind of beyond the point of this video. But long story short, two weeks ago I lost a lot of money. And it's money that I'm very unlikely to ever recover. So it was a rough couple of days and in order to kind of get me out of this low, I decided to do some self-reflection and to do some reading. And while doing that, I stumbled upon Jay Shetty's podcast. I listened to an episode about building self-esteem. And at some point in the podcast, he says that people who are confident are people who have worked through their past issues. And this can include childhood trauma, difficult experiences that we lived through, and our mistakes and our failures. Jay says that it's important to understand what in our past had a healthy impact on us and what had an unhealthy impact on us. And he highlights how in the movie 8 Mile, Eminem had to write down all of his mistakes and all of his failures so he could accept them and move on. And in the movie, as Eminem does that, he kind of processes his failures and he embraces them. And by doing that, his failures become his strength. And no one can hold these failures against him because he himself accepts them and embraces them. So I decided to follow this piece of advice. And in order to move on from my own failure, I decided to write down all of my past failures and bad experiences and the mistakes that I've made. And because I need to earn back the money that I lost on FTX, I decided to film a YouTube video about them. <laughs> That's a joke. I decided to film this because I hope that it can help people who went through similar situations. When I was going through tough times, uh, whether that was while I was building Edsheet, or struggling with calculus or algebra. Also, when I was learning how to code, when I was failing my coding interviews, you know, during those type of moments. Seeing that other people were going through the same pain as me made me feel less alone and it made me feel like there was hope because there were other people who failed a lot before they succeeded. So it made me feel like I could do it too. So let's start with FTX. I lost a third of all my personal money on FTX. And before you come at me with Not your keys, not your crypto. Just know that having cold wallets is a big responsibility in itself and it's not the solution to all your problems. I'm clumsy and sometimes I forget things or I lose things that are valuable, that are important and I was just scared to have this responsibility of owning my own wallet. I was too scared to have my own cold wallet and then lose it or it gets stolen or I lose my access credentials and I just thought it was safer for me in my particular case to have it uh, on an exchange. Obviously, it turns out that wasn't the case. I went through some emotions when this happened and the first thing that I was trying to tell myself to get over it is that it's just money. And there is some truth to it, obviously, and luckily I don't depend on that money to live. I wasn't using my crypto to pay my bills or my rent, so it doesn't really affect me in the short term. However, it's not just about losing money, it's about what that money represents. A big reason why I left Portugal and moved abroad was so I could earn more and save money. I sacrificed having friends and family close to me and living in a country that I call home to pursue a career and to save money 
and now a big chunk of this money that I sacrificed so much for was gone. And it just made me feel disappointed in myself. So after this happened, I built a new plan for my finances and I changed the approach a little bit. The economy is looking very different now from what it did four years ago when I started working and earning money and investing, etc. So that made me feel a bit better because I'm a bit of a control freak. I need a plan. It makes me feel like I'm in control. And I think that's something that I felt that FTX took from me. They took the control away without me even realizing. For anyone who's going through something like this or if any of you lost money on FTX, it's a really difficult situation to accept and to overcome, but just know that you can do it. It takes a lot of courage and strength, but we can do it and we can build again. And besides that, money is important, but they are more valuable things and we should cherish them. Another big one was not negotiating my salary. Sometimes when you get a lot of rejections and then suddenly you get a job offer, you get so thrilled and relieved that you feel tempted to just accept the offer then and there. However, what I've learned is that even if you don't have another offer, there's always a bit of room to negotiate. We always have a little bit of leverage. And one way to use this leverage is to know your market value. And this is achieved by doing market research. So I know that for Europe and for the UK, Talent.io has a tax salary report, which shares a lot of insights for compensation ranges for your location. And Talent.io is sponsoring this part of the video, and I hope that their reports might be able to help you negotiate your salary. I like their work because there's a lot of data points about US compensation for tech companies, but not nearly as much for UK or Europe-based tech salaries. And in the end, that's just bad for us engineers. So I'm going to walk you guys through the tech salary report. The tech salary report was created based on a sample of 100,000 job offers, and it gives you a benchmark based salary that you can expect as a software developer. This salary depends on your location, the type of role and the years of experience. It's important to highlight that this report is focused only on salary and it doesn't include bonuses or equity. It also has data points for daily rates for freelancers and median salaries for remote positions. For example, if we look at the London graph, it looks like the median salary is £55,000 and the average is £58,000. This is considering all years of experience together, and the report then compares this to Brussels and Amsterdam and it breaks it further down into experience. It also contains data points on daily rates for freelancers as well as median salaries of remote developers based in the same or in different countries. Talent.io also approaches topics such as discussing compensation with your manager, how to find remote jobs, and understanding how equity works in tech companies. You can get a copy of the report using the link in my description and they also have a really cool newsletter that you can subscribe to. Thank you guys so much for the support and I really hope that the report can help the ones based in the UK and in Europe. Before we move on to the last topic of my personal failures, I accepted my Rolls Royce offer on the phone when the recruiter called me with the offer. To be fair, the compensation was way beyond what I expected, but that was obviously a big mistake. Even if you're very excited about the offer, play it cool and always try to negotiate the compensation. The last topic we're going to talk about is interview failures. I probably failed 10 times more interviews than I passed. I've been through two quite intense cycles of job hunting and interviewing so far. And in both of them, I was applying from abroad. I'm not the most experienced person when it comes to interviews, that's for sure. but. I did do a lot of research and I did many interviews as well in different areas of engineering. And what I can tell you is that interviewing is definitely a numbers game. It's way more of a numbers game than people realize. Failing an interview doesn't mean that you're not good enough. If anything, it means that you're not good enough yet. Interviewing is a skill that you acquire. It's something that you practice and that you become good at. In every interview that I failed, there was at least one small lesson that I could learn from it. And that's how I got better at interviewing. And yes, it sucks when the rejections come in and it sucks to feel like you're not smart enough, you're not good enough. But at the same time, you need to put those feelings aside and you need to be very pragmatic and you need to look at it objectively. So it's actually not a bad idea to do a few interviews for companies that you're not that interested in so that you can prepare and learn some lessons before you actually apply for the companies that you genuinely want to join. Eventually I understood that 
being rejected in interviews is part of the process. It's, it's like it's part of the game. I would say that the vast majority of engineers have faced rejection, even the ones that are really good and that seem like geniuses. And when I realized this, it kind of took a bit of the pressure off and it helped me to not be so harsh on myself. At some point I told myself, you need to stop wishing for a shortcut. Rejection is part of the process and you can accept it, learn from it and then move on. Or you can continue to take it personally and let it drag you down for no logical reason. This was a bit of a turning point for me and I think that my interviewing experiences just got way more healthy and way more manageable after I changed my mindset about them. And just for fun, I'm gonna give you a list of companies that have rejected me. So I was rejected by CERN for a summer internship in 2016, I believe. I was rejected by the Mercedes AMG Formula One team for an engineering graduate position. I was rejected by Land Rover for a graduate scheme as well. I was rejected by Zalando, who's this retail company in Berlin. I got rejected by TikTok. <laughs> I really bombed the coding interview for this one. Then I was also rejected by Palantir. And this is just companies that I failed at some point in the interview stage. There were so many companies that, you know, just ghosted me and never even invited me for interviews. But, you know, I also got offers. I got offers from Bosch, I got an offer from Rolls-Royce, I got an offer for a PhD position at the University of Aachen in Germany, I got offers from tech startups, and I got an offer from Amazon. Our mindset is very powerful and very important when doing interviews from my experience. And after changing my view of rejections, it really helped me to have a better experience interviewing and it became a healthier process for me as well. I really hope that this video can help someone who is going through a tough time. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength to move on from difficult moments and from failures. Thank you so much for supporting me and for watching my videos. It really, really means a lot to me. I will see you in my next one. Bye!